Squarespace makes it easy to grow your email list by, have, by allowing you to use a newsletter block and embedding it in any post or page or anywhere really on your website. But the default option it allows you to connect this newsletter form with either MailChimp or built-in Squarespace campaigns or Google Drive. It also allows you to use Zapier and that Zapier functionality is what we'll be talking about today. In this video, I want to show you how you can use the newsletter form along with Zapier to connect the newsletter form block with any email service provider. And I'll be showing you an example with Active Campaign, but it'll work with any other providers such as ConvertKit, uh, Constant Contact, uh, Aweber, really any email marketing service provider that integrates with Zapier. If you're new to my channel, my name is Anna from brandedbossbabe.com. I publish new videos every Tuesday. And if you like the content, hit that subscribe button so that you get notified every time I post a new video. So if you're not using Squarespace campaigns or Zapier, uh, let me show you real quick how you can connect the newsletter form, the, the one that comes with Squarespace, to any other email service provider like Active Campaign or, I don't know, Constant Contact or uh, Aweber or what's another popular one. I can't remember at the moment, but you get the idea. Basically, when we click on edit and then edit the form, the newsletter form, basically under storage options, you can either connect it to Squarespace email campaigns, you can connect it to MailChimp, Zapier, or you can connect it to a Google spreadsheet and just have manually collecting the leads there until you are ready to invest in an email marketing provider. So for this to work, you're, we're going to Basically, you're going to create the newsletter form and then you're going to click on Zapier. Basically, Zapier, the pop-up here will explain to you how to connect form integrations, uh, how to connect your forms with a Zap. Basically, what you'll want to do is you're going to, you're going to go to Settings and then under Advanced, you're going to click on Squarespace API Keys and we are going to create a key so let's name it name it zapier and you're going to select forms and then on next it'll create the zapier key make sure to copy this code and save it somewhere on like uh, the notes app or evernote or uh, just write it down on a piece of paper because once it's created you can't go back and recopy it so if you ever need to reauthorize uh, zapier to your squarespace account you're going to need to copy this and enter the correct key. Now, you'll once you've copied the key, you're going to go to Zapier and then under integrations, you're going to search for Squarespace. Of course, you're, you're going to need to make a Zapier account, but Zapier account is free. And then under Squarespace, it will basically ask you to connect the Squarespace account. Now, it won't ask me to do this because I've already connected my Squarespace account, but the process is largely similar. You'll see a pop-up window and you'll have a place to paste your API key and then Zapier will be authorized to access your Squarespace account. Now, once you've done that, you're going to go to Zapier and click on Make Zap and you're going to choose Squarespace. This is the only trigger that's available, so that's fine. You're going to choose your Squarespace account. Now, as you can see, mine is connected. You can test it to make sure it works, or you can even connect an account from here. So let's see if it asks me if I can connect. So let me see if I can connect to my other. OK, so it connected my other account, which, hey, you know what? That's cool. And now you're going to click on Save and Continue, and you're going to choose the form. Now, make sure to add to choose the correct form. You're going to want to name this newsletter form, let's edit this quickly, something memorable. So let's say home page bottom, or you can name it by the name of your freebie. So let's just name it and click apply so that we know we're choosing the correct form. And then click on save and let's refresh this. And here's the form. And now you're going to click on continue. And now you're basically, it tells you that it lacks an action step. So let's add one now. And here you can choose uh, from hundreds of apps. So for example, I'm going to choose Active Campaign because that's what I use. And you're going to want to either create a contact or if you have a welcome sequence, you can add it to an automation. I find this helpful because sometimes it duplicates contact, contacts when you uh, create when you choose this 
option and just something went wrong with when I was doing this. So I like to do this because if there if that contact doesn't exist, they will automatically be created naturally. So then it'll add it to the proper auto automation. So I like to choose this and then click on save and continue. And again, save and continue. And here you're going to choose which automation you want to add them to. You're going to pull the email address from the form. And let's say, let's just add them to that sequence. And once you click on continue, uh, it'll send a test to your active campaign account and then you can finish and name your zap. So homepage demo form opt-in and then toggle this to on. Now you can do this with any other service provider. All you have to basically do is you would add, so they have campaign monitor and of course you'd naturally go to the ad subscriber or you know options that are available for you in most cases you'll want to add subscriber or create a new content uh, contact so let's see constant or you can even do this with convert kit i know they have so convert kit add a tag add subscriber to sequence or add subscriber to the form and then if you have the form set up in a way that triggers a sequence you can just add the subscriber to the form and then you would continue with the rest of the steps as we found here. If your email service provider is not integrated with Zapier, what you can do is select Google Sheets and you would click create spreadsheet row and then you click save and continue. You would choose uh, the spreadsheet that you want to but if your so if your email service provider is not uh, connected what you can do is you can connect uh, your form to Google Spreadsheets and you'll want to select create spreadsheet row and then click on continue and let's connect a different account. So let's use this one for demo purposes and you're going to click on save and continue and select the demo form sheet one and here you can choose what you want to pull. So we want the email address. Uh, we didn't have a name in the form if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we didn't have a name. So let's just pull the email address and you can optionally choose a date which is not available. So an email address will be fine and then you can click on continue and then finish and toggle it on. And then basically let's check the spreadsheet. And as you can see, there's a lot of information that it pulled, but basically this is the Zapier demo information that it pulled in. And what you can do now is click on file, download as CSV, and then you would upload that to your email marketing provider in case it's not connected with Zapier, but almost anything is nowadays. So anyway, I hope this was, this was helpful. And that is how you can connect your newsletter form with any other email service provider. That's it for today's video. If you'd like it, I'd absolutely love it if you hit that like button and the subscribe button so that you get notified every time I post new video. And if you want to discover the secret to attracting your dream clients, be sure to head on over to my website, brandedbossbabe.com. I'll see you in the next one.